Hi, this is Saurabh Joshi from Stratpost and we're at the Singapore Airshow 2016. I have with me here Richard Smith. He's the head of marketing uh, for Saab Gripen and he's he's just a little while back made uh, an, the announcement that the first Gripen E test aircraft is going to be rolled out in May this year. Tell us about that. Yes, on the 18th of May 2016, we'll have the, the rollout of the first Gripen E test aircraft in Sweden. It's part of the, the next chapter of Gripen, it's part of the evolution of the Gripen story. It will be a huge event. And it, it, it's, it's come a long way, hasn't it? I mean, uh, uh, everybody has been watching uh, the Gripen story evolve uh, over the years in different countries. Uh, you've been as associated with the Gripen program. Uh, how, how have you, how, can you tell us what it's been like for you to see the Gripen come from the A to the E? Mm -hmm. Uh, I've been with Gripen for over 13 years now. I would say we've gone from being a market leader to being the market dominator, in fact. Uh, we've been slingshot forward with the new order for 60 aircraft in Sweden, and what I believe is the first batch of 36 Gripenese in Brazil. It's really positioned us in a, in a, in a market dominating position compared to any of the competition. Yeah, Brazil was the turning point, wasn't it? I mean, uh, before that, uh, you know, there were a number of con uh, competitions. Yes. India was one of them. But uh, uh, there was the sense that, you know, uh, Saab was the underdog here. Gripen mm -hmm. was the underdog here amongst all those fighter competitions in the world because, well, it, it's dominated by either the US or Russia. Okay. If you take Brazil, I mean, there we, we, we beat all the big competition. We beat Sukhoi 35. We beat the Typhoon, we beat Rafale, we beat Super Hornet. We were the preferred choice. And I think it's really important that when you buy a fighter system, it's exactly that. It's not just the fighter aircraft that you're buying. You're buying a relationship for maybe 30 to 40 years. You're buying a training package, you're buying a logistics package, maintenance package. And of course, one of the big differentiators for Gripen in Brazil was the offer and the acceptance of the technology transfer program. You were competing in Brazil and India at more or less around the same time. Was there, were there any commonalities in, those, uh, in the offers that you had made to the two countries or, or were there any significant differences? Uh, each campaign has specific differences. It normally stems from what the Air Force wants in terms of how it wants to operate the aircraft, of course. It could be weapon systems. Uh, if you take Brazil, they want to have a specific weapons package and they also want a specific technical transfer package. Uh, in terms of India, yes, of course, there were some differences, but many similarities as well. One of the, the, the key elements of the Gripen program is that you maintain a standard platform. Uh, taking off from what, uh, since you mentioned India, uh, your CEO has visited India twice recently. Uh, your your prime minister, the Swedish prime minister, was in India for the Make in India summit. There's obviously a lot of conversation going on, a lot of discussion going on, but it, it's not well very well reported. Can you tell us something about that? What I can say is that, and it's it's very public knowledge that the the two prime ministers uh, reached agreement on several different areas of cooperation between Sweden and India. One of those cooperation factors was in the field of aviation. Uh, what do I feel? I feel Gripen is a perfect fit for replacing aircraft like MiG-21s, like F-5s, like F-16s. In India, it would be the perfect choice. The smart choice is what I believe. Now, India, India has, uh, is in the position of having uh, a requirement, a need to replace its MiG-21 aircraft. Mm -hmm. it's also, it also has ambitions about jump-starting a, a domestic uh, defense and aerospace sector. So, uh, what is Saab Gripen bring to India in terms of uh, in terms of those things? Of course, if we were approached for Gripen, it would definitely be under the umbrella of Make in India. Uh, we would follow the same setup that we've offered to the Brazilians, or that, that we now implement actually in Brazil, with regards to the tech transfer. There, it's very much focused at the moment on on the job training in Sweden. We'll train around 350 engineers, and then they'll go back to Brazil they'll not only manufacture and produce their own aircraft, they'll maintain the system for the next 30, 40 years. They will take ownership, they will take independence for their own platform. That is what we could also offer to India. 
Will it be uh, simply then a case of replicating the model that you've you've uh, designed with, in terms of cooperation with Brazil in India? I think it's always good to have a platform to build from and then you can add certain modules on which might be very specific to, uh, to a different customer. It could be weapons integration, it could be a preference for different types of systems integration, maybe even uh, indigenous or uh, national systems, whether it's data link or something. So good to have a foundation and then you build from that. Uh, can you tell us something about, you know, uh, you, you had mentioned uh, uh, the Gripen F uh, model, which is going to follow on from the Gripen E, mm -hmm. and you're going to design it in cooperation with the Brazilians. Uh, can you tell us what, what that's going to look like? Uh, the Gripen F is basically the two-seat version of the Gripen E. The Gripen E is the, the single-seat version. Uh, for all intents and purposes, it will look the same, apart from there's two seats. Uh, same uh, capability in terms of uh, operational capabilities, apart from that the single-seater actually has an internal gun, the two-seater doesn't. And uh, uh, you, you also mentioned the Sea Gripen. Now, um, the Indian Navy in the future is expected to have a requirement for fighter aircraft if it decides not to go for additional MiG-29Ks uh, because of uh, what, as and when the third uh, aircraft carrier is, uh, the second aircraft carrier is, uh, is, uh, is launched. So uh, is, there, is there some future in, uh, potential interest that you see from Grip, uh, Saab? What I feel about Saab is we always push the boundaries. We, we, we have a committed, guaranteed uh, development program for the Gripen, uh, financed, budgeted. We have to push the boundaries with new weapons, new sensors. And yes, we do look at a new version of the Gripen for the future, which will be the, the navalized version of the Gripen, or the Sea Gripen, based on a Gripen E. But you've all, all already done some work on the Sea Gripen concept, haven't you? Yes, we have. Uh, two or three years ago, we actually uh, ba basically made the drawings for what a, a navalized Gripen would look like. So we actually have it as part of our future plans for Gripen. And, and what kind of uh, uh, career, uh, carrier would uh, would a sea grip and operate from? Would it be a, a, a ski jump or would it be a, a cattle bar? A cattle bar, so a catapult launch. Okay. Uh, in, 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 uh, in, in the defense minister yesterday mentioned uh, that they're looking to set up an assembly line in India. Uh, they envisage uh, for fighters and they envisage the Indian private sector to participate in that. Is, is Saab prepared uh, to be uh, to, to partner with Indian uh, uh, private companies uh, for if, if they're asked to do so? If approached, absolutely. Richard, thanks a lot for Thank coming. you. Thank you very much.